Government declares deadlock in pension negotiations. Details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Friday, January 11, 2019, I am Leslie Ann Johnson. Government has declared a deadlock in pension negotiations with public sector trade unions and staff associations. When talks continued on Friday, government's Pension Engagement Committee notified the unions and staff associations that an amicable solution appears unlikely given the great disparity between proposals by the two parties. Since the start of negotiations, government has improved its offer of advanced payment of pension, also known as gratuity, to 8% with reduced pension over eight years. But the unions and staff associations continue to demand a 25% gratuity, which government maintains is not affordable or sustainable. However, the continued insistence on 25% gratuity has left the government with no choice but to declare an impasse. And so in keeping with the procedures for the settlement of disputes, the matter will be referred to the Labour Commissioner for conciliation. If this fails, the matter will be referred to the Minister for Labour for mediation. After opting to defer all three substantive items on the agenda during the meeting on Friday, the unions and staff associations indicated that they will communicate their official position in writing to the government. At the continuation of negotiation, the unions and staff association insisted on 25% gratuity for the members. The government side reiterated that 25% is unaffordable, unsustainable, and will breach the Fiscal Responsibility Act. The matter will therefore be sent to the Labor Commissioner for Conciliation. If it is not settled at that time, it can be referred to the Minister of Labor for mediation. I wish to make it clear that the government is committed to pension restoration and reform that will benefit all state employees. That's Chairman of Government's Pension Engagement Committee, the Honorable Oliver Joseph. The Grenada Development Bank, GDB, and the Ministry of Labor have created a financial package that will assist the new recruits for Carnival Cruise Lines to complete preliminary requirements for employment on the cruise ship. These include medical, fitness training, and visa applications. Representatives from GDB met Friday with the first batch of recruits. More than 80 applicants have been accepted, with the first 40 due to commence work in mid-April. Labour Minister the Honourable Peter David encouraged the group to give priority to planning their future as they embark on a new chapter. Plan your life, plan everything about your life. Say you want to go here and plan how you get there. I'm sure if you're in Grenville and you say you're going Granans, you can figure if you're going East Coast, West Coast or going down the, over the hills. You can say, well, that way is shorter because less gas. So less gas, this way longer, but I had to meet a girlfriend on the way down. You can plan every step of the way. Similarly with your own life, plan every step of the way. And it may sound as if I'm just an old man just being miserable. But the truth is, if you plan, it is more likely you'll succeed than if you unplan. Because there'll be all kinds of ad hoc moves on the way forward. So I just want to say that. And in relation to the bank, and the reason I'm saying that is this, that if you decide to take a loan from the bank, you have a certain income, put aside your money to pay back the bank. I'll tell you why. You can come back to the bank for your house. You can come back to the bank for your car. You can come back to the bank for a bus. So you have to always look down the road. Look GDB's senior project officer, Mr. Alistair Bain, says the bank has been in contact with Trinity Recruitment Services, Inc. of Barbados. Representatives from the recruitment firm spent three days in Grenada in December receiving applications and interviewing applicants for various vacant positions on board the Carnival Cruise Lines. Mr. Bain says the continuation of the loan program to cruise ship recruits depends on their consistency in payment. Give you information regarding the loan process, what you, what you would be required to, to, to present us with so that we can do an assessment. Remember, we are not giving you a grant. As the minister said, we are giving you a loan. We expect that loan to be repaid because if it is not repaid, your ne the next batch of recruits may not be able to access funding if we think that the program is not successful in terms of our, our funding for that particular sector. We would have to review it and probably withdraw it. You don't want that to happen. 
And the bank's external relations officer, Ms. Carla Haywood, shared some information on the financial package. Uh, we're looking at a figure of $6,000 maximum that y'all would look to use. So on a monthly basis, you would pay, your payback should look at $520. Um, we, the last set of loans that we did, cruise ship-wise, it came up to about 7000 And that figure payback was 600 a month. This is the National Report. More news after the break. It is here again, it is here again. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. And I just hope the whole of Grenada ready because I sung in a clarion call. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. The Made in Grenada Expo is on February 7th and the public is encouraged to come out and give full support and buy out all local products on show. Products manufactured right here in Grenada. 100% Grenadian. And it's happening right here at the National Stadium. Are taking in the Independence Parade and the Made in Grenada Expo one time. I am so excited. That's why I'm making a fireside. I bring my tent, my blanket, and all kind of thing. And I'm camping right here until everything done on February 7th. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. Continuing the news, the Grenada Tourism Authority, GTA, says Grenada has exceeded its tourist arrival target in 2018, welcoming 528,077 visitors, just over the half a million mark set in 2017. The arrivals account for stayover, yachting and cruise ship visitors. A strong performance was recorded in stayover arrivals with an increase of 9.97%. The numbers moved from just over 146,000 to more than 160,000, with special mention given to what the GTA describes as a bumper Christmas season, which recorded 17% growth. The GTA's Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Patricia Ma, says they are encouraged by the numbers. Canada recorded the highest growth. The Canadian market in 2018, yeah, would, would you believe a 19.5% increase year on year for the destination? So Canada, look, look at Canada, guys. <laughs> There's a lot of potential in the Canadian market and, um, you know, it, it, it's fantastic. And then the USA followed uh, suit and grew by 12.38% year on year so the usa market is also very strong for us the caribbean market also grew significantly almost seven percent year on year and that's our friends from around the region uh, visiting us in grenada so that's that's wonderful we had some significant growth also believe it or not out of latin america and the rest of the world other parts of the world which is interesting globally we're making our mark because we grew by 18.27 percent yeah, so um, that for us is interesting statistic data. We're going also not just in our key source markets, but globally. Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation, the Honorable Clarice Modest Kerwin said, and I quote, achieving 500,000 arrivals has been a landmark goal for the destination of Grenada, Cargo and Piti Martinique. It is a testament of the island's growing influence in the marketplace and industry growth, unquote. The GTA also launched what it called a destination shopping video during Thursday's press conference. Product development manager Mrs. Kul Hoshtialik says it is in response to surveys done in the past, which showed that the level of satisfaction for shopping in Grenada was low. It is of our hope that this video, which we're going to debut today, would create an opportunity for a potential increase in revenue for the industry, especially to those persons in the gift and merchandising subsector. The video creates awareness by highlighting the array of goods, products, and traditional craft that we have in the Tri Island state of Grenada, Caricou, and Petit Martinique. It showcases talented people and thriving businesses. A true Grenadian shopping experience is revealed by the variety of quality products made from bamboo, glass, straw, shells, chocolate, our famous spice necklace, and so much more. The video will be available on the GTA's online platform, local television stations, and integrated in its overseas marketing efforts. Minister for Culture, Senator the Honorable Nolan Cox, says Grenada's 45th anniversary independence celebrations will highlight the country's traditional culture. 
During Thursday's media launch for the celebrations, Senator Cox said the plan is to highlight both the historical and rich cultural heritage of Grenada while marking another political milestone of the country as an independent nation. Um, from the ministry standpoint, one of the things that we uh, were advocating something in terms of uh, the operations of the committee in terms of focus, to focus more on traditional culture. And so that is some, an area that uh, the committee has been mandated to, to focus on a lot uh, in this year's celebration. Uh, so Mr. William didn't mention that, but I just say that, let me just let you know. So that is a, a new area of focus, more on the traditional culture. The minister also spoke about the National Dress Initiative that will be launched as part of this year's celebrations. He says the process is being done jointly with the Cultural Foundation and will be implemented officially for the 2020 independence celebrations. So a number of uh, initiatives have uh, already uh, been executed. The Cultural Foundation is the entity that is charged with the responsibility of executing uh, that activity. Um, so what is going to take place at this year's celebration is to actually launch, we're going to do it in form of a competition and allow for the public to uh, send in designs uh, based on the concept that was developed. So all the concepts have already been constructed. As Mr. Williams indicated, there is a special booklet that, is, that has been uh, compiled by the, the Greater Cultural Foundation. And that, that book, booklet will be um, handed out to prospective persons who are interested in participating in that activity. Um, we were hoping to actually have uh, the final uh, way for this year's celebration. We are, we are working uh, hard towards that. Um, as you know, um, uh, I only came in April, and so there were a number of uh, things that we had to, to get approved, even for budget and everything like that. So a number of things uh, happened, uh, but that in itself didn't lend us enough time to actually have the competition and have the final designs approved, which we are hoping to have uh, this year so that it would be um, displayed as part of the, the 40th celebration. Among the many activities listed for the 2019 independence celebrations are the Community Oil Dung Initiative and Beautification Competition. And that's the National Report. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson.